Good evening, this is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Affordable housing took center stage at an event in Suitland this morning. HUD Secretary Marsha Fudge joined County Executive Angela Osterbrooks and leaders from Montgomery County and Virginia. Fudge highlighted the Biden administration's plan to address affordable housing. The backdrop was Village at Town Square with units starting at $300,000 and a senior apartment complex on Tolls Park Drive. Fudge was asked about the challenges of keeping housing affordable in a hot housing market. Market. The only way to do it is to put more housing in the market, more moderate, low income and affordable housing. And so what the president has done in his last request to Congress is requested resources that we can build at least one million homes. One million. Every American has the right um, to enjoy a certain standard of living, no matter that person's income, no matter that person's background, race, creed or color. Uh, we believe that that um, that promise begins with affordable housing uh, that is available to all Americans. And so in other news tonight, Prince George's police are investigating a fatal pedestrian accident. It happened about six o'clock this morning in the 7100 block of Good Luck Road near Lamont Elementary School in Lanham. Responding officers found the victim in the roadway where he was pronounced dead. The striking vehicle did remain on the scene. Anyone with information on the incident is asked to contact police. And in other news, Prince George's police have also arrested a teenager in connection with the murder of a Lyft driver in Hillcrest Heights. The victim is 71-year-old Abdul Khan of Springfield, Virginia. Khan was working as a driver when he was carjacked and shot multiple times over the weekend. The incident happened in the 3700 block of Dunlap Street. In education news, it has been nearly a decade since Prince George has had an all-elected school board. That will most likely change, but it'll probably be later rather than sooner. Lawmakers have reached a consensus on a bill that would abolish four appointed seats on the board and return to nine elected members plus one student. In January, a task force recommended a return to the old system, and County Executive Angela Osabrooks supported the measure. But a compromise reached Monday delays the return to an all-elected board until 2024. The county delegation is expected to vote on the measure Friday morning. President Biden began his first State of the Union address last night criticizing Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. Biden announced that the U.S. was closing off American airspace to all commercial Russian flights. Meantime, the president touted that the economy has gained more than 6.5 million new jobs over the last year. One way to fight inflation is to drive down wages and make Americans poor. I think I have a better idea to fight inflation. Lower your costs, not your wages. And folks. That means make more cars and semiconductors in America, more infrastructure and innovation in America, more goods moving faster and cheaper in America, more jobs where you can earn a good living in America. And you may have noticed that many Congress members did not wear masks on the House floor during the president's speech. That's because the mask mandate was lifted prior to Biden's address. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. We'll be back in just a moment. The thing that drives me every day as a dad is him. His real name is Darion, and we call him uh, Day Day for short. Every day he's hungry for something, whether it's affection, attention, knowledge. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that when he's no longer under my wing, that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. The craziest thing was believing that your dad knew everything. So as a dad, you felt like you had to know everything. You had to get everything right. It's okay to make mistakes. Just do it from the right place. As long as it's coming from love, then, you know, it kind of starts to work itself out. I want him to be able to sit back one day and go, we worked together, we did a good job. I'll say my kid's pretty dope. I don't remember how it started. Oh, boy. Our back and forth. 
it always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back. Here are the latest COVID-19 numbers for our area. Of the 405 newly confirmed cases, just 39 are in Prince George's. The county's positivity rate continues to ease. It now stands at 1.82%. 11 Marylanders have died of the disease since the last numbers were released. Hospitalizations also continue to decline across Maryland. Currently, 374 people are in the hospital. And a Maryland congressman is tested positive for COVID-19. Democrat Jamie Raskin says he took a COVID test on Monday and the results came back positive. Raskin, who is fully vaccinated, says he is experiencing mild flu-like symptoms. He plans to quarantine at home for a week. The Montgomery County Council is set to resume in-person public meetings. The sessions are slated to begin on March 15th. Residents who plan to attend in-person meetings will have to show proof of vaccination. If you're not vaccinated, you can still participate virtually. Maryland lawmakers and health care advocates are voicing their support for legislation that would create a subsidy fund for small business health insurance. The subsidies would provide funds for small businesses and nonprofits to bring insurance costs down. The bill would allow up to $45 million in available federal funds to go toward annual subsidies. Another $3 million would fund outreach efforts. Small businesses have trouble affording health care. It's really bad for them. And many small businesses in Maryland, maybe the majority, are, 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 are people of color, women. And it's just not fair that they can't get the resources they need. And there is money available, which we want to put into this program. Would it just be a one-time subsidy? The bill has a five-year sunset. So after five years, the legislature would have to look at it again. But we think there are enough resources for over those five years to help a lot of small businesses afford health care, which they especially need as we're still in the pandemic. We're working our way out of it, but we're still in it. And these resources will help them through this situation. And then we'll see where we are in five years. The bill is also limited to businesses of less than 25 employees. And top leaders across the state, including County Executive Angela Osabrooks, are endorsing that measure. High school graduation rates in Prince George's are up slightly. According to the State Department of Education, PGCPS graduation rates increased by 1.5% during the 2020-2021 academic year. This brings the school system's graduation rate to 77.6%. Seven county high schools saw their graduation rates go up by 3% or more, including High Point, Largo, and Northwestern. Statewide, the rate is at 87.2%. Delegate Jay Walker says he plans to step away from politics when his term ends in early January. Walker had contemplated a run for the state Senate in District 26, both in 2018 and again this year. But according to Maryland Matters, he says he doesn't have the time needed to devote to legislative duties due to family and business dealings. Walker's wife, former Prince George's County Council member Monique Anderson Walker, is running for lieutenant governor on a ticket headed by state comptroller Peter Franchot. And stay tuned, we'll be back with more news in just a moment. One in 365 African Americans battle sickle cell disease. I was one of them. Life back then was painful. I was in and out of the hospital and had frequent pain crises. A blood stem cell transplant is the only cure for sickle cell disease. I was fortunate to find a perfect match in my younger sister, but many patients do not have a compatible donor in their families. And black patients have only a 23% chance of finding an unrelated donor. More black donors are urgently needed to help save lives. It only takes a simple cheek swab to join the Be The Match registry. Learn more about becoming a donor and access free patient resources by visiting nsicklecell.org today. You or someone you know could be the cure for a patient battling sickle cell like me. Dad! 
They took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Find her. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Thanks for staying with us. The county's Board of Education has approved a $2.6 billion budget request for fiscal year 2023, which begins on July 1st. The proposal focuses on educational and operational improvements. Budget priorities include decreasing the impact of the pandemic on student instruction, increasing substitute teacher pay, and consolidating the county's five alternative schools. The budget proposal still has to go through the county council. And Mount Rainier is allocating $50,000 to help its small businesses struggling because of the pandemic. If you own a restaurant or another local business, you can apply for the city's Small Business Assistance Grant Program. Businesses with 25 employees or fewer can get up to $5,000 in grants. Mayor Selena Benitez says the town wants to support local entrepreneurs. We are not successful as a city if we have a lot of empty front stores where people are not having businesses. So for us, it's like, you need a little help. We're here to help you the same way you have like devoted your time and effort and your dream and vision into the city. We wanna be part of that as well to make sure you continue doing business in the city of Mount Rainier. Your business must be located in the city of Mount Rainier. The deadline is March 18th to apply. You can visit the website on your screen. Well, now it's time for our pet of the week. Are you hoping to add a cuddly critter to your family? How about having a new best friend to walk with as the weather gets nice? Well, you're in luck as the county's animal services facility has an array of pets. From bunny rabbits to cats and dogs, there's something for everyone. However, today the animal shelter is featuring a slithering snake named Sydney. Don't worry though, he's not venomous. Sydney is a juvenile ball python, roughly about two feet in length right now. He can live up to 30 years old, if not longer, so he is a longtime pet ownership. Um, he is also a little shy at the moment, but definitely should come out of his shell once he gets in a home. And to bring Sydney home with you or any of those other pets, you can call the number on your screen. Let's get a quick check now on your weather forecast. Tonight, cloudy with lows in the 40s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with a slight chance of showers. Highs near 53. Friday, sunny skies, high temperatures in the 40s. And Saturday, mostly cloudy, highs near 60. And for your community calendar, the Greater Bowie Chamber of Commerce is again sponsoring Youth Leadership Bowie. The year-long leadership program is open to high school sophomores and juniors who live or attend a school in Bowie. The application deadline is April 27th. For more information, visit BowieChamber.org. That wraps up our CTV News Update. I'm Patricia Ballone. Have a great evening. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you, get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org.